Hello, welcome to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance's 2020 topic based video series. In this series, we'll review basic concepts and ideas pertinent not only to engineers new to short span steel bridge design, but those looking for a refresher of fundamental concepts. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of fatigue and how it affects short span steel bridge design. Our goals will be to provide a basic overview of fatigue theory. Uh, as well as to cover relevant specifications related to short span steel bridges. It should be noted that we won't have time to cover all of the math, all of the mechanics, or all of the specific code provisions related to fatigue. Instead, we'll provide a review of high level concepts. We'll begin by discussing the background of fatigue, as well as parameters that can affect fatigue. And finally, uh, we'll engage in a discussion of AASHTO provisions. To begin, we should recognize that all bridge systems are subjected to cycles of repeated live loading. As a result, certain details in bridge superstructures are subjected to a possible load phenomenon that we call fatigue. These details can include any region that would contain a stress concentration or any region with an initial flaw, such as a weld. There'll be examples of these details shown later on in the presentation. Uh, the specific definition of fatigue is the initiation and propagation of cracks under repeated application of stresses. What can happen is under these repeated cycles, the cracks can grow and lead to brittle fracture. Just about everybody watching this video has experienced this routinely in their daily lives when looking at, say, a soda can. If you have a soda can and you'd like to remove the tab off of the top of the soda can, Arguably, the easiest way to do it is to take the tab and bend it back and forth a few times. What happens is as you bend that back and forth and subject that tab to repeated cycles of loading, the tab begins to quote unquote soften and the tab will suddenly fracture off. And what's happening is the process of fatigue. You're initiating and propagating cracks into the tab that will cause that tab to separate. Something similar can happen to specific details in short span steel bridges. Granted, under, the, the, under a situation with bridges, you're experiencing high cycle fatigue, whereas with the tab, you're experiencing low cycle fatigue, but by and large, the phenomenons are somewhat familiar. Under stable crack growth regions, we can represent a relationship between the applied stress range and the following two parameters, the number of stress cycles applied and what's called a detail category constant, which we'll term A. Uh, this relationship comes from fatigue and fracture mechanics. We won't have time to discuss this uh, in this video, but I have a link for a resource which goes into this in greater detail that will be shown near the end of the presentation. This relationship will tell you the applied stress range as a function of the number of cycles. What you find is that as the number of cycles increases, the stress range that can be withstood by a given detail decreases. And that would make sense, I would think, from a mechanics perspective. But what you should also know is that experiments have shown that there is what's called a threshold stress. In ASHA specifications, this is called the constant amplitude fatigue threshold. Uh, and what this is, is, is the stress range where regardless of the number of cycles that have been applied, you'll find that no fatigue cracks uh, will propagate throughout your detail. In ASHTO, we term this as the difference between a finite life detail and an infinite life detail. There'll be a plot later on in the presentation that illustrates this uh, in more detail. Now before we discuss ASCO provisions, we should discuss what parameters actually affect fatigue. Affect fatigue. Uh, so first off, let's talk about the material grade. And so the question is, does the material grade of structural steel actually affect the fatigue performance of a given detail? And the answer to that question is no. Uh, this is taken from a fatigue primer for structural engineers. There's a link to this uh, at the end of the presentation as well. Uh, and as shown, there really isn't much uh, effect of the, uh, uh, of the material grade for the range under consideration. If you see here on the bottom, you see here this is the fatigue life. On the x-axis and on the y-axis, we have the stress range. Within this range, what you see is there's really no uh, uh, effect that can be correlated between how steel grade affects the performance. So, so the steel grade actually really doesn't affect the performance of a particular detail. It can be assumed that pretty much all steel grades behave the same under a, a given fatigue load. 
What about the minimum applied stress? Does the minimum applied stress affect the performance? The answer is no. Uh, in other words, while the range of stress is critical, the minimum applied stress isn't. Uh, that can be a little bit difficult to discern from just this plot. Uh, I feel the plot on the next slide really illustrates this much more clearly. So the point is that the actual stress values don't matter as much as the range of stresses. So each of these plots would represent the same range of stress, so the range of stress being the maximum stress that's applied minus the minimum stress that's applied. So you can think of this as the truck on the bridge and off the bridge and on the bridge and off the bridge, and et cetera. Um, if you look at the three plots, you'll see this is from a positive maximum stress to a negative minimum stress. Here we have a minimum stress of zero, and here we have a positive minimum stress. Each of these uh, uh, cycles indicate the same stress range, just a different initial stress. And what the data and the experiments are showing is that the actual initial stress really doesn't matter, it's just the range of stress. So when we uh, compute our fatigue performance in ASHTO, we really only consider the live load, and we consider the maximum stress under the live load minus the minimum stress under the live load. The initial stress applied by, say, the dead load doesn't go into fatigue performance. What does matter is the specific fatigue detail under consideration. And the way that ASHTO represents this is what's called uh, by an SN curve. SN just standing for S being the number of stress cycles, or the, the, the stress range, I should say, and N being the number of cycles. Um, what we have here are two models that, are, that represent fatigue capacity. We have finite life and infinite life. So infinite life is represented by the constant amplitude fatigue threshold that was mentioned earlier. Remember, experiments show that there's a stress range beyond which fatigue cracks will not propagate. This is termed in ASHTO by this term here. Uh, however, under lower cycles of uh, stress ranges, we're represented by the, the model that was represented uh, in the earlier slide. So based on the number of cycles that your detail is applying, you can then determine whether your capacity is either modeled by this expression here or this expression. And as long as your stresses fall under this envelope, your detail is safe. If your stresses were to fall over this envelope, it would indicate that you would need to redesign a given detail. The only thing that's a bit cloudy on this slide is how do you exactly determine whether or not you're in infinite life or finite life. And that's a function of the number of cycles that are applied to your, your given detail. And the number of cycles just comes from the ADT of the bridge, or more specifically, the average daily truck traffic uh, in a single lane. Fortunately, ASHTO provides some very simple models for you to convert this to this using some very simple uh, plug and chug expressions. Now, while the material grade and the minimum applied stress do not affect uh, fatigue performance, the actual details themselves have a profound impact. Here we see similar plots looking at different types of uh, fabrication details, one looking at welded beams and one looking at beams with unwelded cover plates, and you find a stark difference between the performance of welded beams and the performance of in beams with unwelded cover plates. So the actual fatigue or fabrication detail that you're investigating has a profound impact. The way that the ASHTO specification handles this is through the use of what are called fatigue fa categories. ASHTO utilizes a series of fatigue categories to quote unquote grade uh, a detail based on its fatigue performance. Those categories range from category A, which has the best fatigue performance, to category E prime, which has the worst fatigue performance. The only thing that may be confusing to a, a practicing engineer is how do I determine which fatigue category is appropriate for a given detail. Fortunately, the ASHTO specification provides a library uh, of images and details for you as the engineer to determine which category is appropriate for your given detail. For example, consider the image here on the top left. This is a very common detail that needs to be investigated for short span steel bridges. This is an eye shape with a weld for a transverse shear stiffener, and according to ASHTO, this is a category C' prime detail. 
Using this category, we can then determine our A constant. We can determine the number of cycles that differentiates between uh, finite life and infinite life, and we can also determine our fatigue threshold. With that, all we need is to just do some basic sigma equals my over i computations to determine the applied stress range here and compare that against our capacity. There are similar details present for other uh, elements that might be relevant to short span steel bridge design. For instance, if we're looking at a splice connection, this cover, uh, this splice plate would be uh, uh, according would be uh, assessed according to a category B detail. The other one worth mentioning is this right here. This is a welded cover plate. Welded cover plates uh, have have some of the worst fatigue rating, specifically uh, an E or an E prime uh, rating, uh, and as a result. Uh, we'd recommend that you avoid using end welded cover plates whenever possible. Uh, in other videos, we've discussed ESPAN 140, the free design uh, uh, resource available for, for practicing engineers to determine preliminary designs. In ESPAN 140, we never utilize end welded cover plates. One of the reasons being is, is low fatigue uh, uh, category rating. Like I said at the beginning, we don't have a lot of time to cover all of the details and all of the math and, and all of the specifications. Uh, fortunately for you as the engineer, there are some free resources available. One that we thought worth mentioning is LRFD Simon. LRFD Simon is a line girder analysis program that can be used to analyze a straight and low scooter low skew plate girder bridges. Uh, and it's perfect for bridges like short span bridges uh, that don't require uh, a, a large computational model. Uh, and and L LRFD Simon will perform a lot of the fatigue computations for you. Uh, that coupled with an understanding of the topics presented in this video should make for powerful resources uh, for you as an engineer to design and detail short span steel bridges. I'd like to close uh, the video today by discussing two very relevant resources. Uh, first off, the chapter on design for fatigue from the Steel Bridge Design Handbook, which covers relevant fatigue concepts as well as uh, AASHTO provisions in much more detail than what was discussed in this video. Uh, finally, I'd like to discuss a, or mention a fatigue primer for structural engineers. Uh, this is a, a much more detailed document and provides a lot of the background on the math and mechanics, and both of these are very valuable resources for understanding fatigue performance uh, in short span steel bridges. Uh, that concludes our video on understanding fatigue. We thank you for your attention and look forward to seeing you in future videos.